market is stronger Friday morning amid ideas yesterday's losses were overdone. Canola up 10 to $11. The May contract up 1070 at $635 per ton. Strength in the Chicago soy complex provided spillover support, with European rapeseed also higher on the day. However, Malaysian palm oil was a weaker overnight as activity there resumed after a two-day holiday. Weakness in the Canadian dollar contributed to the firm tone in canola, with the uh, currency falling below 73 US cents. That softer currency underpins crush margins and makes exports more attractive to global buyers. Canada exported 162,000 tons of canola during the week uh, ended April 7th. That was rough, roughly four times what moved the previous week. However, year-to-date canola exports of about 4.2 million tons are still running about 32% behind what moved the previous year. In the U.S., soybean, corn, and wheat futures are all higher, also correcting after yesterday's losses with uh, position evening ahead of the weekend. Soybeans up 19 cents in the May contract at 11.78 per bushel. Diverging opinions on the size of Brazil's soybean crop did keep some caution in the market, with the USDA keeping its call unchanged at 155 million tons in a report out yesterday, while analysts in Brazil are about 9 to 10 million tons below that. However, harvest pressure out of South America does, does continue to weigh on prices overall, tempering the chart-based gains in beans, with Brazil in its final stages and Argentina about 10% done. The USDA did report private export sales of 124,000 tons of soybeans to unknown destinations this morning. Corn also higher up 8 cents in the May contract at 436 per bushel. Declining crop estimates out of Argentina were a bit supportive, although relatively favorable U.S. crop weather as seeding gets underway in the south did temper the gains. Wheat futures higher across the board. Minneapolis spring wheat up seven cents in the May contract at 644 per bushel. Kansas City also seven cents higher in May at 591 per bushel. And Chicago soft wheat up nine cents in the May contract at 561 per bushel. Condition ratings for wheat in France declined one point in the good to excellent category, now at 64%. Meanwhile, spring wheat seeding is underway in parts of the U.S., although more moisture will be needed in some dry areas. That's a look at the ice futures and U.S. markets for Friday, April 12th. In Winnipeg, for MarketsFarm.com, I'm Phil Franz Workington. Spring into action with Butler Farm Equipment and check out their wide range of farming machines and tools designed for efficiency and durability. From top-notch Toro and gravelly zero-turn mowers to versatile implements for compact tractors, ATV, UTV sprayers and spreaders, they have those as well. For the green thumb enthusiasts, try their Mackenzie and West Coast seeds for a bountiful harvest. Butler Farm Equipment also has generators, walk-behind trimmers and chainsaws. Head to Butler Farm Equipment today, equip yourself for a fruitful spring. The opinions expressed on this show do not represent those of the station. If you've missed any of the shows, you can follow the podcast at energeticcity.ca. Welcome to This Week in the Peace, a show dedicated to the people, events, and news of BC's peace region. Here's your hosts, Dub Craig and Jordan Prentice. Good morning and welcome to the show. A little later on, Jordan is going to be talking to somebody excellent. <laughs> Good start to the show. <laughs> Good morning. Um, earlier this week, I was joined by Five Star Boxing Academy owner and head coach Justin Donnelly to learn more about his upcoming boxing event, Five Star Fight League Unleashed. Now it's my turn. But first, the Charlie Lake Conservation Society is partnering up with the Fort St. John North Peace Museum for some wonderful events and projects in the coming months. To talk a bit about that and all the other wonderful things they do at the Society, we're joined now by Glennis Mondrell. Glennis, welcome to This Week in the Peace. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for being here. Um, if people have never heard of the Charlie Lake, Soci uh, Charlie Lake Conservation Society before, for. Can you tell us a bit about what kind of what you guys do and what your mandate is? We're just a little group of people who are in love with Charlie Lake and we want to um, provide a forum for discussion and mostly for information about the lake to inform people um, about what its 
great value is and how to enjoy it. We want everybody to get out and enjoy it. It's a tremendous asset and we really want to make everybody uh, appreciate it for what it's worth. Yeah, yeah. and I, you want people to go out and enjoy the lake and I guess responsibly enjoy yeah, the responsibly, lake. Yeah, responsibly, for sure. Um, I know you wrapped up last year kind of a, an ongoing project where you were doing um, testing kind of in the lake, I, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, tell us a bit about that project and, and how that'll be something that will happen again in the future sometime. Yeah, in the past, we have done water quality testing and we have done, we just completed a three-year algae um, testing program. Uh, we run these things for a few years at a time, collect some data, and then we, they go on to hiatus for a number of years and then they're, they're compared again. So those reports are available and uh, we will continue to do plant monitoring every year. We mm -hmm. do that in August. We just go out and we have some sample sites just to monitor the plant growth in the lake. Um, the, we also may do some siltation testing here. We're just not sure about, about that. Mm -hmm. But the uh, water quality testing and the um, algae testing will, continue, will hopefully continue in 8 to 10 years from now. I see. Now, the sites where this testing happens, is that always the same? Like, do you always say, this is a good spot, yeah. or does that kind of change up? Yeah. The other piece of testing Nick Bacanti is exploring right now is coordinating the chlorophyll in the lake, so that would be the algae and plants, with the satellite data that we can get from NASA. Hmm. So we're right now he's trying to calibrate that so that if there is an event in the lake, hopefully we'll calibrate with what we get from a satellite. Mm -hmm. So that eliminates that need to actually be out on the water. So he's working on that kind of thing right now. Interesting. So, yeah. Um, is this, I guess I'm curious about how this, this came about the, t the testing and stuff happens. Is this something like the, the government of BC or whoever the sort of body that's overseeing this says, this is something that needs to be done. We'd like you to do it or as a society like we we want to do this yeah and here's our findings yeah no this is completely voluntary it's the conservation society they hear come they see concerns living there and being on the lake they hear concerns from the public and so it's just an exploration of how is the lake maintaining itself how is it changing mm -hmm. climate change is going to be a big issue in the future as everybody who's been out to the lake knows it's about a meter below it's sort of norm if, it, if there's a normal yeah it's very low right now. Uh, it's going to be so. It's going to be warmer. It's going to be a lot of things are going to be different. So, monitoring those variables over time are going to be um, increasingly important. You know, rainfall last year was critically low, yeah. and it's show, showing up everywhere. So okay. yeah, just well, monitoring. It's just uh, trying to keep a, a tab on things. That meter below is that like current as of like right now essentially? Or well, is that... yeah, if you d and that's just an eyeball. It's not an accurate yeah. measure. But um, when Nick uh, entered the water data last year, um, that's created collected by the city at the I think it's at the weir. Um, the water did not go above the weir last year, hmm. so there was so little rainfall um, that that the lake level has just continued to go down and down and down. Is that something the society is monitoring this year then? I mean, we all, we were reading a news story this morning about the snowpack being 65% yeah. of what it was last year, kind of, again, a normal baseline for the piece. Are we seeing that uh, kind of affected in Charlie Lake as well, yeah. even different from last year? Yeah. And so um, Nick has a really um, great um, visual that he created from the data that we get from uh, the city. And uh, we'll continue to collect that data and watch watch how the data looks. It's fascinating. And yeah. again, this is all you're all just volunteers, kind of all doing volunteers, this, yeah, uh, for the love of the lake. Um, I mean, again, my question is, you know, I think we were talking before. You have a background in teaching. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you you've got a variety of different people doing these things. Are they? They're not all scientists, I guess, is what I'm saying, or, or whatnot. So, not, so where does this these skills and learning come from to be able to test things that sort of I, I don't know, meet a standard that, that would say this is this was correctly done and yeah. whatnot. Well, we have a biologist, a fish biologist on our board and, oh, okay. a, and a chemist. Perfect. And um, yeah, and they get help from other, uh, we belong to BC Lake Stewardship and they also conduct experimentation things. So there's all those guidelines out there through BC Lake Stewardship mm -hmm. and we follow those guidelines. And any sampling we collect is all, you know, lab goes to a, an affiliated lab for, for analysis and things. So 
Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, uh, coming up this month, and actually today over at the Fort St. John North Peace Museum, they've got the free take-home kits that are all about bats in the North Peace. I know you've done bat walks in the yep. past before. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, that that's happening at the museum, because as I understand, there's this one's for kids, but there's something kind of for older people later on this month. For about yeah, we bats. have we have a few things coming up. The bat, um, the bat thing um, <laughs> is is something new that they're trying, and it's we had a lot of interest from kids last year, and our our presentations weren't really uh, put um, leveled for kids, so okay. they wanted to have something available at the museum. So uh, we're first of all uh, for kids. I'm going to do a frog thing in conjunction with the library and the museum mm -hmm. uh, early in May. I think it's the fourth. Yeah, it's the fourth, and that's for children. And then we have a bird talk and a bat talk at the museum in the evening. Mm -hmm. So the bird talk is going to be just basically about um, here are the birds you can expect to start seeing as amateur watchers of birds, and then. Um, on the, I'll just check here, the 23rd, we're going to have a talk about the bats that should be arriving, should be arrived in the piece, and that will also be at the museum. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things in May, the frog talk, the bat talk, and the bird talk at the museum um, that we're going to put on. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, the bats, you say they arrive, are they coming from somewhere, or are they like hibernate over? Some, uh, most of them are um, migratory. Okay. The little brown um, bats, the little myotis, they... Um, some of them stay here. They they wow. hibernate in cliffs and and warm places, attics, and and so uh, they arrive very very early. They'll be here um, first second week of May, mm -hmm. and then the others uh, come in. Bats um, they are hard to monitor, <laughs> and so there's there's more questions out there about where they go and what they do in the winter than there are answers. And um, we our person Inga Jean is our person to go to she's our expert and she we call her for questions because they're they're a bit of an enigma we don't know where they go and what they do <laughs> amazing um the frog talk uh, i think that's a newer thing if i'm if i'm not mistaken uh tell us a bit about that and and sort of you know what we can expect from that talk. um the frogs the frogs the wood frogs will be croaking here very soon if yeah. in the next couple of weeks and then the chorus frogs come after that and then the toads and then the salamanders so um, we've often done this in schools. We haven't ever done one with the museum before, so we're just going to do one with the library and museum to mm -hmm. get um, to get it out there. And it's just a little information session about what to listen for mostly, and what the what can be expected over the next um, three four weeks as far as the amphibians go in the piece. Interesting. I don't know if you know this, but is is there depending on what part of the lake you're 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 at right whether you're at beaten park or or maybe in the north end or the south like is there different frogs kind of living in those spaces or are they they kind of just mixed up anywhere yeah around? they're sort of they like um still quiet areas so if there's yeah. marshy areas or they need lots of vegetation for for escape from predators for the tadpoles and things there's a few in in the bays the shallow bays of charlie lake a lot of them are in the ponds and dugouts and creeks and and ditches around the the lake and in the in the whole general countryside we're quite fortunate here our amphibians are still doing okay mm -hmm. um but again you know we, with change who knows it's going to be a dry year yeah and i so. and i guess beyond just sort of informational uh sort of uh you know reasons or whatever is this also something you're monitoring? How many bats there are? Uh, you said there was difficulty in that. Same thing with the frogs, I guess, eyeballing, noticing changes in, oh, there's a lot less frogs this year, yeah. a lot more. It's all, at this point in, in the country, it's citizen science. Yeah. And when we give the bat boxes to people, we like them to count bats. Um, some people, um, some children in the community became involved in the frog watch program but there's we need more citizen scientists at it. we absolutely need more people to take part in those things because okay. uh, yeah we because it's just you know the there's not a program per se where an employed person's doing that it's just citizens out there trying to do the science yeah mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if somebody's listening and saying, I think I could help out Absolutely. with this, how, how do they, I guess, just reach out to the Conservation yep. Society? Eh? Yep. Okay. Uh, one last thing before you go, Glynis. Um, we talked about kind of about May. Do you kind of know what's happening in the summer and beyond with the Society and some other things you got Yeah, going in, in June, we want to do a bird walk again at Beaton, and mm -hmm. we want to do a plant walk, and we want to uh, try something different, which is um, kind of some journaling, nature journaling. We want to get people into that. Oh. It's involved with that citizen science thing. So we're going to try and run those three things in June. 
um, that we haven't set dates for those yet. We have to line up our experts. <laughs> and um, then in July, we're hoping to have the um, Curious Critters again on Parks Day. That's the tentative date of July the 20th. I believe it's the Saturday that's BC Parks Day. And then we're going to, we've tentatively booked um, the 9th and 10th of August for our bat walk at Beaton again. Um, so those are our tentative dates. And once we've got those uh, pinned down, we'll put it on our Facebook page and we'll put the posters up around uh, town when we get our dates uh, settled down. Mm-hmm. We'd also like to do a mushroom or a fungi walk oh, uh, in the fall, but without some moisture, that's not going to happen. So yeah. again, that's, a, that's kind of up on the air. We're hoping to do that. Uh, we've got ice off um, happening pretty soon. Um, the predicted date for ice off. That's mm-hmm. a big, you know, what if. <laughs> the people gamble for that, Glynis? Or is well, it we don't gamble. We have oh, re- the winner has <laughs> rights to bragging rights to, you know, I pick the day. Okay, fair um, enough. <laughs> and, you know, that date is anything from the 20th of, A- uh, 20th of April to the 18th of May. So mm-hmm. it's a big gamble. But the ice is getting quite unstable and rotting right now. So who knows what that, um, what that will bring. So, yeah, so we have the um, info events in at the museum in May. We've got hopefully some walks at Beaton Park in June. We've got um, Curious Critters hopefully in July and the Bat Walk in August. And then whatever else we can sort of stick in there. So Excellent. anybody who's interested in nature journaling and everything, we want to kick that off and try that this year. So awesome. Um, get hold of us. We'd love to have some input and some sharing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think the best place is your Facebook page. That's the best Lake. place. Yeah. 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 So if you haven't already, follow the Charlie Lake Conservation Society on Facebook to keep up on everything that happened to go uh, happening having happened there and of course uh, the Fort St. John North Peace Museum has the, lots of the things that you're doing with them as well uh, coming up in the next few months one more thing our yeah. AGM is on the 20 I better get the date right it's on April 23rd okay uh, we're having our AGM so if anybody's interested there'll be a, a notice on there as well so excellent well Glynis yeah. thank you so much for coming yeah. by I really appreciate your time today it's good to chat with you so <laughs> Thank you. That's Glynis Mondrell with the Charlie Lake Conservation Society. We'll be right back uh, in a bit here. Jordan Prentice will be chatting with Five Star Boxing Academy owner Justin Donnelly in just a moment on This Week in the Peace. When you're doing projects around your home, you know you can count on your local home hardware. What you may not know, though, is your local home hardware is also locally owned and operated, which is why they always know exactly how to help. Plus, they do so much for local charities and nonprofits profits because they love supporting the community they belong to locally owned genuinely canadian come meet your neighbors at your locally owned and operated home hardware building center here's how Y'all ready for a ride on the wild side? Chances Casino in Fort St. John has thrown the bat bat of the year with an interactive murder mystery dinner party this April 13th. Jump jump headfirst into a rip-roaring, heart-thumping hillbilly wedding filled with suspense, laughter, and a mysterious murder. So rustle up your courage and grab your tickets faster than a hot biscuit at a Sunday breakfast by visiting chancesfsj.com. It's the interactive murder mystery dinner party, April 13th at Chances Casino, Fort St. John. Supporting you on the job site and supporting the community. TNT Communications is proud to be sponsoring the 18th Annual FSJ Petroleum Association 4-on-4 Hockey Tournament, April 10th to 13th at the North Peace Arena. See TNT Communications for UTV rentals, two-way radios, stadium light towers, even cell boosters for your truck, house, or work site. TNT Communications, your bell source in the peace. Welcoming everyone to the 18th Annual FSJ Petroleum Association 4-on-4 Hockey Tournament. Can-Do Oil Field Services is a privately owned pipeline and facility construction company in Fort St. John. They have specialized in construction, installation, and maintenance of pipelines and facilities in the Fort St. John area for over 27 years. They strongly believe in working with clients to execute all job functions in a safe, cost-effective, timely, and harmonious environmental manner. You can count on Can-Do Oil Field Services for your next project. Say goodbye to counting change and having to pick up tickets or a new pass every month. BC Transit's new electronic fare system, UMO, is now ready for use in the Dawson Creek Transit System. UMO allows you to select the best payment method for your lifestyle and travel habits. Download the UMO Mobility app from your app store or pick up a reloadable UMO card for free from a BC Transit vendor. For more information, visit our website at bctransit.com forward slash UMO. 
You can watch this show live on Facebook. Catch the replays at energeticcity.ca or be part of the show by texting your thoughts to the Fort City Chrysler line at 250-787-2222. Hello, I'm Jordan Prentice and welcome back to This Week in the Peace. Earlier this week, I sat down with Five Star Boxing Academy owner and head coach Justin Donnelly to learn more about his upcoming boxing event at the Pomeroy Hotel and Conference Center. Justin, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, So tell me about your upcoming event, Five Star Fight League Unleashed. Yeah, Five Five Star Fight League 27 Unleashed. happening April 27th, Saturday, April 27th at the Pomeroy Hotel and Casino in the Banquet Hall. Uh, 27th show, uh, last year was our 10 year anniversary show and we uh, blew that one up and way oversold it and it was a great showing. So uh, hard to top that one this year. So this year, instead of, you know, making it, last year I wanted to kind of just make things special. I brought in a live band and, and did some special events and stuff like that. This year I made it all about the fights and the top quality of fights that I could bring to Fort St. John for entertainment value for, for the people. So great. And who's fighting this year? Well, I have, I want to go over this again in my head. Cause I, th- I think <laughs> I've got seven locals fighting out of my gym. I've got two out of Iron Forge, out of Dylan Lilkey's gym, and then I've got um, three fighters from Dawson, three from Fort Nelson, a couple from Grand Prairie, and then we have two teams coming in from Alberta uh, from really credible gyms um, that I'm really excited to have. So we got uh, Marshall Boxing coming in from from Edmonton, and... um, Southpaw Boxing coming on from Calgary, as well as Nick's new gym that he's training with down on the island, Le Stage Boxing, who has had a lot of good pro boxers over the years and stuff like that. So um, we actually have Lane Harris down there training with that team right now, and as along with Nick Dragovich, another one of my guys that moved to the island, is training there full-time as well. So, so Nick Young, when you say Nick, that's who you're talking about, obviously. So Nick Young is the main event. Um, of this fight, I have a question about Lane. So Lane fight, or sorry, Lane trains here at Five Star, but he's training right now on the island. That means that, like, when he fights in this event, will he be representing Five Star or the stage? Uh, no, he'll be representing Five Star. Uh, Nick will be re- representing the stage now. He's full time living down there. Nick's or Lane, sorry, is just doing a two week camp down there. Uh, tough for Lane up here, you know. You most experienced guy, hard to get training partners. He's got training partners, but. Uh, being on that kind of next level, he needs to go and get some better training and better sparring partners. So we plan for him and him and Braden Sims are actually both down there right now training. And Nick Dragovich, who came up with me, has been living in Victoria. He's in film school. So he decided he hasn't fought in four years. So he's coming back to to make another appearance. And I'm really excited about it because Nick Dragovich, we call him the dragon. He was just a super exciting fighter, always entertaining, come to fight. And he came at me and said, listen, I'm, I'm training full-time. I'd like to take another fight. So, so I got him up at the stage with Nick Young going full-time. So they'll both be representing the stage, which I'm, I'm happy to have them do. Like I said, it's kind of like they graduated high school mm-hmm. and went to college and, and they're getting to come home. So it's, it's super exciting. And um, let's just touch on last year's Five Star Fight League. It was a huge success. Um, sold out, oversold, as you said. So are you expecting the same this year? Yeah, we're actually over three quarters sold out. Um, I can fit 50 tables in there. I have 48 sold right now. I have only two left uh, for just over two weeks out is is pretty incredible. Um, General missions usually take people to the last minute to get, but we've got about half of those left. So I think we got 70, 80 generals left and two tables. So I'm, I'm, 100% 100% sure it'll be sold out by by the time we go get to fight night. So, yeah, as far as success goes, I don't always measure the fight success on just selling out the tickets. I like to see people get their money's worth and get good entertainment, and I've done the very best job I can do matchmaking this card to put on great fights from all levels, from beginners to mid-level guys to we actually have five open fights on this card which is as you guys i think we talked about this last year um that's anybody with 10 plus fights so they're they're the guys competing at that national level provincial level so we have five open fighters on this which i've never had that many it's usually a lot of novices which tend to be entertaining for the crowd too because 
a little more brawly, but mm -hmm. um, no, I think we got a really good mix for it. So we got 15 fights booked total with uh, nine fighters from Fort St. John. And what kinds of things have your fighters, specific to Five Star, uh, been working on in preparation for this event? Well, without getting too specific and giving away the game plan, um, <laughs> <laughs> my guys, it's it's uh, business as usual. They're always training hard. I push them hard. I have high expectations for my team. We were a little bit less active here after Christmas than I wanted to be because if I'm being honest, I... Uh, I want. I I just wasn't happy with the level of of you know kind of fitness level that the guys were at for me to start putting them in the bigger bigger shows. So we've been a little inactive. We just got active here the last six weeks, and they're all ready to go. The whole team's looking good. Um, so we got two on the island training, a two week camp down there. Um, all my guys are going hard five nights a week. They're they're ready to go. That's great. And with Nick Young as the main event again. Um, I know that you worked really closely with him. As you were saying before we started this interview, it's kind of like he graduated <laughs> high school and now he's on the island. How does it feel uh, to have him come back and do this considering how closely you worked with him for so long? Oh, it's great. Uh, this will be the third year in a row now that since uh, post-COVID um, that Nick has came home and he'll be, has been the main event. So uh, it's really exciting for him to come back and he loves coming home to fight. Um, being down there and fighting down there is great, but there's nothing like fighting at home. So, and Nick has is, is just turned into such an exceptional talent. Um, I love the kid. He's like my own son, basically. He's been with me for, I can't even remember, 12 years probably now. So to see him go off and go to that next level, with that said, without over announcing he has put it on social media so i guess it's public knowledge this will be his last amateur fight and he will be going pro probably by the fall so That's which puts me in a position where i maybe look at promoting pro boxing in fort st john so we'll see well, that'd be cool um call me an event it, it, slot goes to lane harris um lane's just opened up now uh, we're going to take him to Western Canadians in Calgary the weekend after my show. I got big hopes for Lane, um, and he's definitely deserving of that co-main event slot. And he's rematching the guy from last year, which was a split decision win for him, and likely a guy that he will have to fight at Western Canadians. Uh, the guy that he's fighting just silvered at Nationals. So uh, he's got his hands full. He's he's ready to go, and I'm excited for it. So. Great. So what's – I mean, you kind of just mentioned – the Western, sorry, what is it? What uh, YYC Cup. It's kind of like West, Western Canadians. Okay. Yeah, they, they consider it Western Canadians, too. So along with that, what what's next? What's up next after this event for Five Star? Yeah, so we're going to take the whole team to YY, YYC Cup um, in Calgary. I've got six for sure going. That is That tournament is for open and novice athletes, so it's kind of nice for us. We can take the whole team there and get four days straight of fighting and hopefully get at least two, three fights for each guy. And then after that, we'll be heading to Lacombe, just outside of Red Deer, for Diamond Belt at the end of May. Okay. And then we're looking at another card. And uh, I think the one in Spruce Grove is just to keep them active into before they take a little break for the summer. I'll try to take the team down to Spruce Grove and try to get them each fight there as well. So, so you have a lot going on <laughs> for just, just a like the next month or two. And then your fighters will take a break before you head into next season. What are your goals for your fighters and for your gym for next season? Uh, next season, like I said, COVID's thrown such a wrench into things. This was the first year we've seen a national since before COVID. Um, it was it was kind of thrown together. Uh, I was there. I went and checked out and reconnected with a bunch of the guys and coaches and the president of Boxing Canada, and, and they're excited to get everything rolling again. So it's kind of like we're finally back in that groove. So the goal for us is right back to where we, we always were, is that's get the guys going hard in September, October, get a couple fights, and take the, the open boxers to provincials in Vancouver in November and then see how things roll out there and then we'll have the big tournaments in January February the Golden Gloves um, those those sort of things before nationals so with any luck we'll be looking at a couple of guys on the provincial team heading to look for a national title next year. Well, I look forward to seeing what uh, the next year has in store for for you and for Five Star and I look forward to attending the 
Five Star Fight League Unleashed in two weeks, I think it is, on the 27th. Two weeks, Saturday, 20, April 27th, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you, Justin. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I uh, just want to say a huge thank you to our, our sponsors. Um, without them guys coming on year after year, it would uh, be tough to make these shows happen. So um, keep an eye on the social media. We'll be doing a lot of thank yous to all them guys. I won't uh, try to name them all <laughs> in this interview. Or all. There's, there's way too many. Um, like I said, well, we've got a loyal... Uh, great support system from a lot of local businesses and we really appreciate it so perfect uh, thank you so much for joining me today thanks Justin. for having me of course that was justin donnelly owner and head coach of five star boxing academy we'll be right back to wrap things up on this week in the peace for over 30 years tyson with graphics man has dedicated himself to assisting people with their design projects whether you need a fresh logo or eye-catching posters and business cards tyson is committed to bringing your vision to life let's make something special with the graphics man you want something special call the graphics man Give Tyson a call at 250-793-6766. Candu Oil Field Services is a privately owned pipeline and facility construction company in Fort St. John. They have specialized in construction, installation, and maintenance of pipelines and facilities in the Fort St. John area for over 27 years. They strongly believe in working with clients to execute all job functions in a safe, cost-effective, timely, and harmonious environmental manner. You can count on Can Do Oil Field Services for your next project. Hey there, Fort St. John. It's back and better than ever. General Motors is offering an exceptional $6,500 off on select models. We've got over 25 of them on the lot with new options landing every week. This is Kyle Beck, sales manager for Murray GM. Now is the time. This offer won't last forever. Come and see why so many drivers choose us at Murray GM. Give us a call today or visit our website at murraygmc.com to shop our inventory. Kindergarten registration in School District 60 for children who will be five years old by December 31st of this year is now available. Early registration will make sure seats are available in your home school and give you access to welcome to kindergarten programming opportunities. Play-based learning with BC certified teachers in kindergarten helps children with their social, emotional learning, fine and gross motor development, speech, reading, and more. You can register online now or call your school about an in-person appointment. Visit our website at prn.bc.ca for more information. Brad's Furniture and Appliances Hit the Mark is back and bigger than ever. Listen weekdays starting Monday, April 15th from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for your chance to win cold, hard cash. All you have to do is guess a number from 1 to 100. If you get it right, you win the money. If not, we'll add another $10 to the pot. So what's changed? We're starting every new round with $100 already in the pot to give you more money than ever before. Track the numbers at moosefm.ca to zero in on the money. Brad's Furniture and Appliances Hit the Mark is brought to you by FSJ Return It, Rhythm Auctions, TNT Communications, and Bronze Flooring. At Peaceful Pages, not only will you find a large selection of Bibles, devotionals, and faith-based books, but they also carry a collection of Christian clothing, home decor, giftware, and jewelry. Peaceful Pages Christian Bookstore, open Tuesday to Saturday at 101 Avenue, Fort St. John. Moose Country Weather. We'll see a mix of sun and cloud today with a 30% chance of showers late this afternoon and early this evening. Bit of wind, southwest increasing to 40, gusting to 70 kilometers an hour this afternoon. We'll see a high of 13. Mainly cloudy to start tonight, but that clears up after midnight. Wind dies down a bit as well. We dip to a low of 1. Tomorrow, sunshine becoming a mix of sun and cloud in the afternoon. It'll be windy again, high of 10, and sunny and 12 for Sunday. You're listening to the all-new This Week in the Peace with hosts Dub Craig and Jordan Prentice. Be a part of the show by texting your thoughts to the Fort City Chrysler line at 250-787-2222. Thank you to our guests, Glynis Mondrell and Justin Donnelly for joining us on This Week in the Peace. 
You can listen to this show again by checking out the podcast over at energeticcity.ca slash podcast. We'll store this in future episodes of the show there as we make them. Also, you can check out our other locally produced podcasts while you're there before the piece and Secrets of the North. That's our show. I'm Jordan Prentice. I'm Dub Craig. Be well. Join us again next Friday morning at 10 for another edition of This Week in the Peace, your weekly talk show dedicated to the people, events, and news of BC's peace region. Or you can listen to this podcast again at energeticcity.ca.